Good afternoon. I'd like to read this afternoon in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, a very well-known verses for a lot of people, but I would like to read some passages and what I'd like to do, and if you want to try to find these as we go along, we're going to look at the little references to knowing in passage. It's something that I hadn't noticed until fairly recently, even though I may have read this passage a lot. But we'll start first of all in John chapter 1 and verse number 9. John chapter 1 verse 9. Speaking about the Lord Jesus, it says, That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, but nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now we're going to go down the passage a little bit, and we come to verse number 26. Verse number 26. John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom, whom ye know not. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latchet I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Bethabara beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, after me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me, and I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel, therefore am I come baptizing with water. And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him, and I knew him not. But he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit des descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Now going down the passage again, and we'll go to verse 47. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him, and said of him, saith of him, Behold an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile, Nathanael saith unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. So I think we'll see there was five times it mentions in these verses about knowing Four of them are about people knowing the Lord Jesus. And the last one, which we're going to look at first, is about the Lord Jesus knowing someone else. So we'll think a little bit about the last one first, a man called Nathaniel, whom the Lord Jesus came to speak to and to call. And Nathaniel had never met the man, the Lord Jesus, before. And yet... What he came to discover is even though he didn't know the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus knew all about him. The Lord Jesus said to him, Before that Philip called you, called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. That was in response to Nathaniel saying, Whence knowest thou me? How do you know me? Well, Nathaniel came to discover what I think the, all of us know have come to discover is that the Lord Jesus knew all about him. This scene probably Nathaniel was sitting in his own garden, sitting under his own fig tree in his own garden and nobody else knew he was there. 
But the Lord Jesus knew exactly where he was and exactly what he's doing. And that's the same with us. The Lord Jesus knew exactly what we are, what we've done, everything about us. He can see not just our external, he sees right into our heart. And he sees what our heart's like as far as God's concerned. He sees that all of us are sinners. He sees that we've done things that are not right in God's eyes. He sees that we have sin in us, but yet he loves us. It's always a remarkable thing to me that the Lord Jesus came into the world knowing everything about what was going to happen to him and knowing everything about the people he was coming to. We were just singing some hymns just before we started speaking about the Lord Jesus coming into the world and loving us beyond measure. And he loved us beyond measure because he knew what we were like and he still loved us. And so Nathaniel came to discover that the Lord Jesus knew all about him, but he still loved him. But then the other passages are all about people coming to know the Lord Jesus or people who didn't come to know the Lord Jesus, which is sad. The first thing we discover is that he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. There was an old man who used to be in our assembly, our meeting, and he used to say he was in the world. That's history. The world was made by him. That's theology. And then he said, and the world knew him not. That's tragedy. And it's true, isn't it? The one who came into the world and came with the purpose of dying to save us, the world didn't know him. That was 2,000 years ago. It's not any different today. The world still doesn't know him. Just as well that when John the Baptist was saying these words, he didn't stop. He said, but as many, as when John the Apostle was writing these words, he didn't so stop because he says, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of the children of God. Even though the world doesn't know him, we can as individuals get to know the Lord Jesus. And it's a matter of receiving him, of accepting him, accepting that what he did on Calvary for us was for us. You know, it's not enough to know about him. You know, lots of people know about the Lord Jesus. Lots of people have read the Bible and they know lots of things about the Lord Jesus. Some of them know much more about, about the Lord Jesus than I'll know and I know. They've probably spent more years looking at the Bible. Even people in universities, they spend all their time studying the Bible. But the tragedy is that some of these people know about him, but don't know him. They haven't asked him to become their saviour, to ask them, him to deal with their sins. They haven't come to accept that when the Lord Jesus died on Calvary, it wasn't just for the world, but it was for them as individuals. And that's what it means to come to know him, to know that he died for me as an individual. And he died so that I could be saved, so that I could have my sins taken away, so that the Lord Jesus could fit me now for a place in heaven. And that's what knowing the Lord Jesus is. So it says the world knew him not. Then it said, when John the Baptist was speaking to the Pharisees, the religious people of the day, and he said in verse 26, there's one standing among you who ye know not. You know, these people were like some of the people we talked about a minute ago, who they they knew the Old Testament from back to front. 
Some of them could probably even quote it off by heart. But when the Lord Jesus was here, they didn't know him. They wouldn't accept that who the Lord Jesus said he was, the Son of God. They didn't want him. I think that's the tragedy. Some of them, I think, even realised that what he was saying he was, was true. But they wouldn't accept it. It's sad when that's the case. That people who hear who the Lord Jesus is, hear what he can do for them, take away their sins, give them a new life, eternal life. You know, some people think eternal life is just for heaven. It's not. Eternal life makes a difference to our life down here as well. Gives us a new meaning, a new purpose in our life. Gives us one who is always with us. We read that when we trust the Lord Jesus, we're given the Holy Spirit to dwell inside us. And it changes everything. As Paul said a minute or two ago before in his introduction to the hymns, it changes everything. It means that we no longer are living for ourselves, but we're seeking to live for his glory and we're, we're trying to serve him. But he gives us the power to do that and we know that we have eternal life, is what John writes. But then the last two occasions, John the Baptist is giving his own testimony and he says that there was one and he says, I didn't know him. He says, but now I do know him. How did he know him? Because God told him what to look for. God had revealed to him that the one who was going to come after him, who was greater than he was, the one who when he baptised the Lord Jesus, God the Father spoke from heaven and said, this is my beloved son. Just the same as I'm trying to bring the word of God to you today, John had had the word of God revealed to him. And he, once he didn't know him, but now he's saying, I do know him. And I've accepted him. And what have I accepted? That he is, as he said, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Not only the sin of the world, but John came to realise that he came to take away his sin. And that's the key thing. It's all very well for us to know that the Lord Jesus died for the sin of the world. But what we have to come and accept is that he died for my sin as an individual. And then ask him to take away that sin and come and be my saviour. And if I do that, like John says, we'll know him. And like Nathaniel further on in the chapter, we'll get to know him. Like so many before, we'll know him as our saviour. Not just as our saviour, but as our Lord. The one who directs our life. The one who we read what he says that we should do in the Bible. And we seek to obey it. That's what it means to trust the Lord Jesus. Not only that he takes away our sins, but that we make him the one who's in charge of our lives, the one who we're following. So we've just thought for a few minutes there about knowing the Lord Jesus. The fact, first of all, that he knows us. Isn't that a miracle that even though he knows everything about us, what our sin is, he still loved us. He still came into the world he came and he died for us. He came and he gave his life for us and he offers us salvation that we might know him, that we might trust him and that we might be able to serve him. So we just give thanks for all the Lord Jesus has done for us and we pray that everybody who hears this word today will not only know about him but will come to know our Lord Jesus as their saviour. May the Lord bless his word. And shall we give thanks for the, the food.